Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the math show. Um, today we are continuing to work around, and let's see, I'll write a few things over here. Uh, you can already see we got some word problems, but we are going to be talking about this concept of multiplication or uh, one might even say products, right? Products of decimals, products of decimals. That's something that we have talked about recently. Um, you know, that word of and decimals helping us realize that is multiplication. Uh, and today we're going to be thinking about like, what is it that we're doing with our word problems? And so today we're just going to review some of our word problems and our steps for doing that so that we can make sense of the work that we are doing. Um, and that is going to be the job. So let's just kind of dive into it today and jump in, dive and jump and hop and skip and do all the other things into it. And let's look at our very first question today, right? So our question here says, and I'm, a, I'm over here, I'm over here reading this, it says a farmer uh, using their land to grow different foods, eight tenths mile of the land is used for growing fruit, three tenths miles of that section is used for blueberries. What is the total mileage used to grow blueberries for growing blueberries, I guess is exactly what it says. Okay, so that's a lot of information. So let's talk about a few things right away, right? One thing we've been talking about is keywords. And again, we kind of have like of in here. We also know that we have some decimals. We also know we've been practice, practicing multiplication of decimals in class. So, I mean, this kind of makes sense of that right away. So. I have a couple options, right? First, I'm going to think about what it is that I'm doing. Like, I do need to make sense of like a total. And with that being said, I have some parts in here. I have three tenths of something and I have eight tenths of something. So uh, that's going to help me understand with like my bar model. But actually, another thing that's going to be really helpful for this is if I really think about this, because recognizing that both of these numbers in here, I'm even going to write the equation because we see that we're multiplying here. But I want to be thinking about more about what have we learned about this, right? What we know is that we have two decimals that are smaller than one, right? Because this would make it one. There's nothing in the ones place at all, right? Um, so if we could, it would make a lot of sense to take this and... Um, realize that since we're multiplying two numbers that are smaller than one, we're actually going to end up with a product that's smaller than three tenths or eight tenths. Um, and that's something that we're starting to understand with decimals. So it's a little confusing at times, but we could also model and make sense of that because if we took our land, right? And sometimes it's just drawing a picture. Like if I took my, this land, here's the farmer's land, right? Well, eight tenths of this is is what he had what they have what they're using to grow food so not not even the whole thing is used for growing food and and if i look at this model this this is my hole this is my hole right here but it's actually only eight tenths so i actually need to make tenths two one two three four one two three four it's actually only eight of these so I don't know, I guess I have to shade this in somewhat. There's only eight tenths of these that's being used for the food itself. So there's three, four, I should use a different color. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, right? So that's just the food right there. That's the food, which means we can see in this model, two tenths of it is they're growing something else. I don't know what they're growing. Uh, doesn't even matter. Now, recognizing that what they're saying is, of this section, right, of the eight tenths, of this section right here, well, three tenths of it is devoted to blueberries, which again then means I need tenths going this way. So I'm going to make tenths going this way. So uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, and then we need three tenths of that. So let's see, let's, what's the color? Of it? Let's go this way. So I'm actually going to two, three. So, sorry, there's one tenth. I'm going to do little dots. It might be easier to see. Two tenths. Three tenths, right? So that's three tenths that's devoted to blueberries. Um, but now the question really is, is that we're actually only talking about three tenths of the eight tenths. So we actually can't look at all of it. We're actually just looking within that eight tenths section 
So that would be here. And if we look in here, this actually gives us an answer. This this gives us an answer. And, oh, man, why does that always happen? It's so funky. There we go. There we go. And so if we start to play around and look at this concept, there's our answer. Our answer is right here. It's it's in these hundreds, because that's what one little square is, is a hundred. So we have one. Oops. Didn't want to erase. Oh, boy. Okay. There we go. Let's go back to writing. Uh, let's see another color. Let's go here. Okay, so we have one hundredth, two hundredths, and this is again where we have the orange and the purple coming together, which now I'm showing with green. Uh, three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six hundredths, seven hundredths, eight hundred. Oh, I count there eight hundredths. Um, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen hundredths. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 hundredths, which would look like this, 24 hundredths. And again, you can see that. Look at this. 24 hundredths. Well, that's smaller than eight tenths. And it's also smaller than three tenths because, again, we have a three in the tenths place and a two in the tenths place here. So when we do something like this, now we need a label answer, which now I can, I guess I'll delete. Oh my gosh, why, why, why does it delete random things and not what I'm trying to delete? This is our song, the delete song. Um, so if we look at this, then we need a label answer. And our label answer is, is that actually 22 or 24 hundredths um, of a mile, 24 hundredths of a mile or 24 hundredths miles uh, is four blueberries. And again, trying to make sense of what that means. And we know it's going to be smaller because, again, we're multiplying by things smaller than one, right? Okay, so a little fun game with that. So that's that first problem. Let's kind of move on and keep thinking about, like, when we read something, what are we doing? What kind of multiplication? What can we predict? So here's our second question. Nope, just kidding. Here's our second question. It says, at the store, mega boxes of Takis are on sale for $4.95 each. How much would it cost to buy five boxes worth? Oh, wow. So, I mean, here's a few things you could think, like even modeling right away, right? And this could work, like instead of a bar model, this could be called modeling because I have five mega boxes that I want to buy. And I know that each mega box is $4.95. cents. So it's like, how much would it cost if I bought all these? And see how I can model this? Again, this is modeling. You don't have to always do a bar model. This could be a model right here because it is a model. It's a picture. It shows five boxes. Each one's $4.95. Um, and then I could think about that equation, right? That equation is telling me that I have $4.95 and I'm multiplying it by the five boxes I'm going to buy. And that's going to get me my total. So in this case, one thing we realize is we have whole numbers, right? We have whole numbers. We have four holes. We have five holes. Um, and this actually is pretty close to five holes. So I could even use an estimation knowing that my answer will be around $25. Um, and so that's the next thing we know is that when we do our math in this case, because I have whole numbers that are greater than one, my answer is going to be larger than 495 and it's going to be larger than five, right? It's going to be larger than both those numbers. And we can see that it should be around 25 holes. Now, I have a couple of options here, right? One thing is with this, when one of them is a whole number, it's not a large whole number, it's five. I could use repeated addition. And that's always going to help me find exactly where the decimal goes. Because we know that when we're adding decimals, the number one rule is to make sure your decimal is lined up. I'm going to put this one up here. So let's just do that, right? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, this is 9. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 times 9 is 45, and 2 more is 47. And then this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 times 4, that's 24. And then my decimal drops right down. And what do you have? What do you know? We said it was about 25. It's actually $24.75. That's super close. So... Here's my labeled answer, right? And again, it works with a labeled answer and money because you can just put the dollar symbol as a label. So here we have those things we look for when we use word problems. We have a model that says model, trust me. We have an equation, right? We have a solution, 
That's this over here. That's just the math. And then we have a labeled answer. And notice again, the labeled answer is different than the solution. I'm not just writing my label next to the solution over here. I'm taking and rewriting my solution somewhere else, and then I'm putting a label next to it. That is the proper way of doing it. So there's four things that we can do there, okay? So again, making sense of this, right? Making sense of what we do with our word problems. And then what techniques do we know? So let's take a look at the next one. Let's just keep this rolling. I'm gonna try to make this one quick and easy for us. All right, peaches are sold for $3.57 per pound. There's that word per. We talked about that in our vocabulary. Uh, if you want to look into your vocabulary thing right now, you'll see that per uh, can help us with multiplication, which would make sense with the work we're doing. Uh, how much would it cost you to buy two and 75 hundredths pounds of peaches? Okay. So again, I'm going to go model this way because I need a total we do not know of. But what I know to get that total is that we have $3.50 per pound, and we have two and 75 hundredths of a pound. So we'll be multiplying these together to get our total, which again, that can be my equation now. So I'm going to, I'll write this right under here, three and 57 hundredths times two and 75 hundredths equals T. So there's my equation. And now we just do the math. So I could use estimation in this case, like this would be about four and this would be about three. So it's going to cost me about $12. And this is a good thing to have in mind, especially if you're really at the store, right? Estimating. And in this case, I overestimated both of them to make sure that, oh yeah, at the most, it's going to cost $12, which is good because I have $15. So I can actually do this, right? That's like something to think about in a real life situation. Uh, but let's actually now go solve this. So uh, one thing we can do, I can't use repeated addition in this case, right? It's just not going to help me because I don't know how to do two and 75 hundredths of a three and 50, that just doesn't make sense. So another technique we've talked about is the estimation works. We know it should be around 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these numbers as if they were whole numbers. And then I'll think based on my estimation where that decimal will go. So I'm going to use standard algorithm. So I'm going to go seven times five, um, and that's 35. And then I'm going to say five times five, that's 25 plus three more is 28. So the eight goes here and I go over here with the two. And then I'm going to say five times three is 15 plus this two is uh, 17. So 17 goes there. Now I'm going to move to the seven. So seven times seven is 49. Because I'm working in the tens place, I'll put the nine in the 10 put my four up here, seven times five is 35 plus four more is 39. And then seven times three is 21 plus three more is 24. And now we'll come over here to the two times seven is 14. Uh, two times five is 10 plus one more is 11. And then two times three is six plus one more is seven. And we're gonna add these up. So we have a five, 17, uh, 17, 21, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a seven and a nine. So what we end up with are these digits, nine, eight, one, seven, five, um, and this will be a really cool one to think about because we know then we're talking about um, about 12 holes, right? So if I was to put my decimal here, that's less than $1. That's not going to work. Uh, if I put it here, that's nine holes. That's pretty close to 12. Uh, if I put it here, that's 98 holes. That's not even close to 12. That's too big. So actually, I'll go back here and let's stick it right there. Um and uh, we'll go from there, um, realizing that this is money. So with money, we actually go here. So it'd be about $9.81, which is tricky. And then we can also do that technique where we just count place values, right? We see that I have one, two, three, four. So I should have that in my answer. One, two, three, four. But the tricky thing is with money, right? We don't have four place values in money. We actually only have two. So we could almost eliminate these in our answer. So again, this is the solution. The solution has all these digits, 
but the answer itself actually is just about $9.81. So that's it. I'm going to call it at that. So um, with that being said, think about that work you do today. Think about getting into the practice buddy and practicing some of these problems and thinking about multiplication of decimals, thinking about techniques and things you understand. Should your answer be larger than the numbers you're starting with or smaller than the numbers you're starting with based on their own value? And then don't forget to do a model, write an equation, and then do that work and then have a labeled answer. So with that being said, keep up the good work. You are awesome. Keep it up. See you next time. Keep rocking.